As mentioned last week, this video will talk about the use of medicinal herbs. Before we dive into their historic use, let's look at some more modern day uses of medicinal herbs. It is evident that many people continue to use herbs in a medicinal manner. There are many modern day approaches to this. Looking at the yarrow in our garden, this herb should aid in lowering blood pressure, reducing fever, and helping to treat rheumatic pain. Echinacea or purple coneflower is suggested to boost the immune system and help your body fight infection. It is said to shorten the duration of the common cold and flu. Lavender is commonly used for anxiety, stress, and insomnia. Chamomile has been recommended to help insomnia, eczema, and oral health as it is suggested to reduce gingivitis and plaque. Next, the lovage in our garden contains vitamin C and B complex vitamins. It is also suggested that lovage improves urinary health. The lemon balm is suggested to aid in stress. Lemon balm reportedly helps to increase calmness, memory, and alertness in adults under mental stress. Proof of herbalism can be traced back all the way to our Paleolithic ancestors. A Neanderthal burial was found in northern Iraq. It revealed a man laid in soil covered with numerous herbs, including yarrow. The use of herbs has been present and active throughout history on Earth. The Canadian Naturalist and Quarterly Journal of Science from 1857 suggests that the first evidence of botanist study happened from the early group of philosophers from Greece. They place focus on digging roots and finding herbs. It can be suggested that their ultimate goal was to further the arts, particularly medicinal arts. In the 13th century, the Arabians were one of the few nations that applied themselves diligently to the study of plants. Finally, during the 16th century, a large part of the Eastern world, specifically Europe and Asia, placed a large focus on the development of arts and science. So botany flourished in almost every country. It had advocates in France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, and Germany. European discovery of the Americas only enlarged the field of curiosity, research, and possibility. It is suggested that some First Nations tribes use echinacea externally to treat cold sores, burns, snake bites, and wounds. The root of this plant was often chewed in hopes to relieve toothaches and also to aid in digestion. Solomon's seal root was often used by women as it promotes positive uterus health and provides relief from associated pain. As displayed in the picture, it reads, affords relief in many female derangements. This box of Solomon's seal root belonged to H.J. Mahaffey Drugs. This drugstore was located on the corner of Clarence Street and West Street, right on the canal. This local business was originally opened by Frank K. Brown, a man who graduated the Ontario School of Pharmacy in 1891 and set up the business the same year. After settling the business in 1895 and becoming a very successful businessman of Port Colborne, he sold the business to his clerk, Mr. H. Mahaffey, in August 1911. This shop remained in the same location and went on prospering. Dog days of summer are associated with the summer's peak temperature and humidity. At least this is a modern definition of the term. If you were to ask an ancient Egyptian what the term dog days meant, they would probably tell you that dog days happened when the Nile River would overflood. Ancient Egyptians would celebrate this flood water as it would enrich the soil and encourage the crops to grow. Opposing this, ancient Greeks and Romans believed that dog days represented and brought evil. This evil being drought, disease, and discomfort. These days represent the hot and humid days experienced in the middle of July and August. It is said that men and dogs alike would be driven mad by this extreme heat. I hope this video has furthered your own knowledge of medicinal herbs. As we have learned, medicinal herbs have a tremendous amount of history throughout the past centuries. Medicinal herbs were used to treat anything from a sore throat to a disease that was impacting one's health. 
As we examined, the herbs in our garden serve many medicinal purposes, and we've even looked at an example. Make sure to tune in next week to see the progression of our garden and the next topic that we present. See you soon, Port Colburn!